Hello there you guys, welcome to another of my videos. On this video there is quite a few things to negotiate about. So I am going to be giving you the latest news on Ben Chewell from Leicester. Then I'm going to be giving you some latest news on Jesse Lingard. Then I'm going to be talking with you a bit more about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer by the way. I will be giving you my reaction to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's press conference later on because he is doing his press conference today ahead of our game against Southampton on Monday. So yeah, so let's get on with the news now regarding Ben Chirwell. So according to reports, we are set to battle it out with Chelsea and Manchester City for Ben Chirwell and it does say we are in pole position to sign Ben Chirwell. Now, reportedly, he's valued at around £60 million. Pounds. Uh, ben Chirwell is a left-back. <coughs> and, you know, we've already got, like, two left-backs in the team. You know, we've got Luke Shaw at left-back. He is our first-choice left-back, and he's been our first-choice left-back for a while. But there's uh, doubts over Luke Shaw's future at the football club. Um, also, too, we've got Brandon Williams at left-back. Now, I think this has been Ben Chirwell's fifth season with Leicester. He has made around 123 appearances for them. He has got a contract with Leicester until 2024 and he is only at the age of 23. Uh, I think Chelsea have actually now been in for Ben Chirwell for a while. Uh, Chelsea now have already done good business. Uh, they've already signed two players. You know, they've got Hakim Ziyech in February from Ajax for around £38 million. Or was it 37 and quite a few weeks ago, they got Termo Werner for around £48 million. Pounds. I think they've spent around is it, £80 million pounds on them two players. You know, Chelsea are also looking to get Kai Havertz on the board from Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, Manchester City, you know, they're looking for a replacement for Benjamin Mende, you know, because obviously, you know, he's sustained quite a few injuries. You know, Leicester have lost quite a few of their imperative players in recent years. You know, they lost Harry Maguire to us last summer, don't forget. They also lost Rahid Maris to Manchester City in the summer of 2018. You know, they also lost Danny Drinkwater and Angolo Kante to Chelsea. But there again, Leicester recruited a few players in in recent years. So would you take Ben Chirwell at Manchester United? He's a good player, you know. He's well proven in the Premier League. Uh, used to play for Huddersfield. I think he also used to play for Rushdens and Diamonds at one point as well. So let me know if you would take him at Manchester United. So that is the latest news regarding Ben Chirwell from Leicester. Uh, now let's give you the news on Jesse Lingard. Uh, so now the chase is on for Jesse Lingard because there's now quite a few clubs that are, are interested in him. I heard that West Brom have recently been interested in him. West Ham have expressed their interest in him. I think also to Leicester have expressed their interest in him. And Everton have also been in for Jesse Lingard. So there's around four clubs that are interested in him. I think, you know, we need to get rid of Jesse Lingard in the summer transfer window because he's very, very inconsistent for Manchester United. You know, he's obviously you now been struggling to get game time. And like I said before, reflecting on Jesse Lingard's status at the football club and reflecting on the number of years he's been here, he's, you know, he should be putting much more better performances out. You know, Lingard has got, what, a year left on his Man United contract, but the club do have an option to extend it for a further year. I don't think Jesse Lingard's registered one goal or one assist in the Premier League for over a year, so that just indicates how, how inconsistent he has been. In the Premier League for us, he's made around 131 appearances and scored 17 goals. I think we'd probably want in the 20-odd million pound range for Jesse Lingard. So I can see us getting rid of him in the summer transfer window. Uh, I think he did score in like three of our finals before though. But it would be beneficial if we could offload the player. So that is the latest news regarding Jesse Lingard. Now, let's give you the news regarding Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. So, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has promised a bright future for Manchester United. And definitely, you know, 
Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will be Manchester United manager next season. <laughs> Even if we weren't to get qualification for the Champions League. Um, I've been hearing that, you know, if we were to get qualification for the Champions League, it could affect our transfer business. Because I did say, didn't I, you know, Solskjaer does deserve at least another season at Manchester United because it is a transition period and it has been a transition period for a while. Don't forget, earlier on in the season, Solskjaer was close to getting sacked by Man United because earlier on in the season, we'd enjoyed our worst start to a Premier League season for 30 years. And at that point, you know, there was talks of Mauricio Pochettino coming in to replace Solskjaer. There was also talks of Masmiliano Allegri also coming in. But now, you know, we have been in a really, really good vein of form. You know, we are unbeaten now in our last 17 games in all competitions. And we are unbeaten in our last 10 Premier League games. And this is our best vein of form since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was the interim manager. Uh, we recently beat Aston Villa by three goals to nil at Villa Park. You know, we've become the first team in Premier League history to win four consecutive games by three or more goals. And in the last four league games, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has gone with the exact same lineup. With the exact same lineup. And it was a very, very good performance against Aston Villa. You know, it was good to see Bruno Fernandes yet again get his get his name on the score sheet. That's his eighth goal for Man United this season, came from a penalty. Also, it was good to see Mason Greenwood score yet again. Uh, definitely Mason Greenwood is the foreseeable future for Manchester United. You know, Mason Greenwood's on 16 goals for the football club this season. Looking very, very effective on that right-hand side and... Ole Gunnar Solskjaer did say, you know, that Mason Greenwood's ready to play for England. He's ready to play for England at senior level. And he said he's a much better finisher than Wayne Rooney was at the same age. But this has been his first full season in the senior squad. And Paul Pobber also got his name on the score sheet. And that's his first goal for Manchester United this season. His first goal since April 2019. But since the resumption of the season, you know, Paul Pobber has made a fantastic impact. And his combination with Bruno Fernandes has been very, very good. Uh, we've got uh, four games now remaining in the Premier League. Just four games now. And I can see, as you know, continuing our unbeaten run. You know, I think we can go and beat him for the remainder of the season. Um, our four games we've got left is Southampton, Crystal Palace, West Ham and Leicester. I think probably the hardest game out of all them is the one against Leicester. But Solskjaer's demanded maximum points. You know, he said we've got to win all our remaining games, you know, if we are to get a top four finish. I said, you know, we do need qualification for the Champions League for next season. Really, really do. Um, as it stands at the moment, we're two points behind Chelsea and just one point behind Leicester. But when we do play Leicester on the final day of the season, you know, that probably, you know, will decide who finishes in the top four. You know, we can also win two trophies this season and that's the FA Cup and the Europa League because we are into the semi-finals of the FA Cup. We have got Chelsea and I'm really, really looking forward to that game. And also, too, we're more or less into the last eight of the Europa League because we are 5 0 up against Lask from the first leg. Uh, the draw for the Europa League quarterfinals was done yesterday, like I said. We will play either Copenhagen or Istanbul Basakia. And the quarterfinals will be played on the 10th and the 11th of August. Um, our second leg against Lask will be played on the 5th of August and that. But I think we are emerged as the favourites to win the Europa League. Uh, we want to get some silverware on the board under Solskjaer because we haven't won out in terms of silverware yet under him. And we haven't won out in terms of silverware since 2017. And that was when we won the Europa League in the League Cup in Jose Mourinho's first season. We won the FA Cup back in 2016 under the Louis van Gaal era. You know... But I'm very, very convinced, you know, that we can win, it, win, you know, either the FA Cup or the Europa League. It would be even better, you know, if we could win both of them. It really, really would. It really, really would. But I think now Solskjaer's got everything right at Manchester United and we're going in the right direction under him. 
Uh, like I said, Solskjaer's decision making's really, really improved. Really, really has improved his decision making because earlier on in the season, a lot of the decisions he was making were were the wrong decisions. Um, like I said, he didn't really have a plan A. He didn't really have a plan B. Didn't just basically didn't know how to change a game. Didn't you know know how to nullify teams. But you know, he's, since his tactical change and that, you know, he seems to have got things right. Um, you know, Solskjaer now knows his best eleven because he's gone. You know, like I said, with the same team in the last four games, he knows his best formation as well. You know, Solskjaer has been going with that four two three one formation um a lot this season. A few times he's gone with different formations, but I think he's gonna stick now with the four two three one formation. He's gonna stick with the four, four two three one formation. But you know, Solskjaer made a lot of rotation. He made a lot of rotation uh, throughout the course of this season, but let's reflect on the injuries that Manchester United have had. But like I said, see, it's going to be interesting to see how he approaches the summer transfer window. Uh, Solskjaer's already revealed his plans for the summer transfer window. He did recently say that he does not expect a lot of surgery in the squad for the summer transfer window. But I think Solskjaer's looking to make around two or three signings. He's already confirmed his transfer priorities. He's told Ed Woodward the three positions he wants to strengthen up. You know, he wants to recommend the striker in. He wants to recommend the right winner in. And, you know, he's looking to recommend a centre half in. So that, you know, they're the areas that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer does want to strengthen up. He did confirm that he will avoid buying any rotten apples in the summer transfer window. Because he warned our players quite a few weeks ago he will not tolerate any rotten apples at the football club. But, you know, the summer transfer window will be Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's fourth transfer window as Manchester United manager. Because so far he's overseen three transfer windows at the football club. And in the last two transfer windows he's recommended five players in and spent just over £200 million. And the players he has recommended in so far have done really, really well. But Solskjaer knows he's got the backing of Ed Woodward and he's also got the backing of the Glazers. Uh, you know, you had Ed Woodward the other month saying that we will remain competitive in the summer transfer market, but he did say we won't do business as usual in the summer transfer market. So he ruled out big transfers to Manchester United uh, because I think the coronavirus pandemic had cost us around £28 million, And when our financial figures got revealed the other month, it said our net debt uh, is over £429 because our debt had risen up by almost £130 million. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see who Ole Gunnar Solskjaer recommends in in the summer transfer window. As you all know, Jadon Sancho is our number one priority target. Um, I was reading uh, stories regarding Jadon Sancho this morning and it says we're set to go all out to sign Sancho. Uh, Dortmund are planning to use the money they get for Sancho to help uh, resolve their finances because don't forget, Bruce G. Dortmund lost £40 million pounds because of the coronavirus pandemic. Now, as far as I'm aware, like I've updated you regularly, uh, we've agreed personal terms with Jadon Sancho, and he's agreed a five-year contract with the football club worth around £140,000 a week. But no fee has yet come to an agreement between Man United and Borussia Dortmund, and we're in negotiations with Dortmund over agreeing a, over agreeing a fee. Dortmund have, you know, said several times they want over one hundred million pounds for him. I think we've confirmed that we are reluctant to pay any more than sixty or seventy million pounds for any player. It recently said that you know we're only willing to pay fifty million pounds for Jaden Sancho. Uh, Borussia Dortmund now are actually you know looking for replacements for him because I think they've come to accept the fact that Sancho uh, does want to leave. It's reportedly said that we're We've put like six players up for sale to fund the move for Jaden Sancho. Reportedly, Jaden Sancho uh, deadli deadline has been set. It said uh, recently that we've got until the tenth of August to sign the player. Or Sancho to Manchester United is off. So you do know the news regarding him. Uh, you know the news regarding Jack Grealish as well. You know, he's another one of our priority targets. But I think we've really, really improved in the transfer market under Solskjaer because, you know, we've been criticised, you know, for several years, you know, reflects on how poor our recruitment policy's been. 
you know, have also been criticised for overpaying for players. And I will agree on that aspect. We have overpaid for players in recent years. You know, 75 million for Lukaku, 18, 9 million for Pogba, 40 million for Matic, 50 million pounds for Fred, 80 million pounds for Harry Maguire. So we have overpaid for our players. And this is this is the the reasons why Ed Woodward has been criticised. Um, you know, Woodward's been at the football club since two thousand and twelve. Uh, Glaze, the Glazers, you know, have also been critical of them for several years. But in the last seven years, anyway, there's been a hell of a lot of problems at the football club. You know, there has in the last seven years. You know, we spent close to the billion pound range on players. And we've recruited over thirty odd players in since the Alex Ferguson era. Like I said, you know, Moyes brought. Fellaini Juan Matarin, Louis van Gaal brought likes of Snidling, Sebastian Schweinsteiger, Di Maria, Falcal, Daily Blind, Rojo, Damian, Martial, Shaw, Herrera, Romero. You know, Louis van Gaal brought a good 15, 16 players into the football club. You know, the vast majority of the players van Gaal brought in have now left, but there's still some here. You know, Mourinho, he recommended 11 players into the football club. The vast majority of these players are Jose Mourinho, so let's put into the equation Solskjaer is inheriting, you know, them. So there you go. But people say reflects on the money that's been spent at Manchester United. You know, we should be where Liverpool are, or at least where Manchester City are. And we've also got players on big contracts at the football club. At the football club. But yeah, you know, Solskjaer has been at Manchester United now 18 months. So he has been at the football club a year and a half. And he has been permanent Manchester United manager for around 15 months. You know, we give Solskjaer the job permanently. Reflect on what he did in that three-month period when he was the interim manager. Um, also, too, a lot of players' contracts have been extended since Solskjaer got recommended into the club. But we are still facing a dilemma regarding the contracts. We're still facing a dilemma regarding the contracts because we've got um, eight players' contracts that uh, do expire next year and Solskjaer's got to make a decision on these eight players. You know, the recent player to sign a new contract was Matic. On Monday, it confirmed that the man Matic had signed a three-year contract with a football club uh, to keep him at the football club until 2023. And all of that. But yeah, you know, to be fair though, we have extended a lot of players' contracts since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer came into the club. I, I agree with us giving some players contracts because they deserved it. But on the other hand, there's some players we've given contracts to who we should not have given contracts to. You know, um, I, I like the way uh, Solskjaer has promoted the youth as well because the young players have been given their chances this season. You know, like I said, I've been very, very impressed with Greenwood. Um, I've been very, very impressed with Brandon Williams when he's played. Yeah, but there's obviously, you know, some young players that have found game time very, very difficult. But there's players in general that have found game time very, very difficult. You know, Solskjaer's got rid of a lot of the players since he got recommended into the club. I think we've seen over 20 players now leave Manchester United, you know, since he came in. You know, Solskjaer's planning to get rid of more of the Deadwood in the summer transfer window. I think he's looking to get rid of at least five players in the summer transfer window. He's uh, only going to Solskjaer. I think we'll be looking to get rid of Phil Jones. You know, we're also looking to get rid of Smalling permanently because uh, he's out on loan with Roma. Uh, we'll be looking to get rid of Rojo permanently. He's out on loan at Estudiantes. Uh, Diego Delo, I think we're looking to get rid of him because I don't think Diego Delo is good enough to represent Manchester United. Also, too, uh, we're looking to get rid of Lingard, Andrews Pereira. Um, I'm very, very hopeful that we can get rid of Alexis Sanchez on a permanent transfer. So definitely no more players are going to leave Man United in the summer transfer window. So we are going to generate money that way. Mm -hmm. But like I said to you, um, our expectations next season will be to challenge for the Premier League. I'm not saying we're going to win it next season, but you know, hopefully you know, we can mount a title challenge up. I'm very convinced that we can win a title under Solskjaer, so if we can do that, that will be our 21st title. You know, This has been the seventh season now we have failed to mount any kind of title challenge up. You know, we haven't won the Premier League since 2013. So the last time we won it was in Alex Ferguson's last season. But like I said, you know, we are the most successful team in England at the moment. But yeah, next season, you know, I think, you know, we will be up there challenging for the title. I really, really do. 
you know, like I said, Solskjaer's just got under two years left on his Man United contract now, hasn't he? Because when he got the job in March permanent last year, he signed a three-year contract at the football club worth around £7.5 million. Pounds. Yeah, and another good thing, uh, Solskjaer has gained managerial experience, reflecting how long he's been with us now. Uh, Man United is the third club in his managerial career. But I said to you, didn't I know what saved Solskjaer's job at Man United? And that's definitely the sign of Bruno Fernandes because Bruno Fernandes has made a difference in the team. I think, you know, with him being a club legend, that could also play a part in it as well because Solskjaer was a great player for the football club for 11 years. He flourished under Alex Ferguson's guidance. And like I said, you know, this season we've done very, very well against the big six sides. We've taken 18 points against the big six sides this season. So that's also very, very good. But yeah, you know, a hell of a lot of things have really, really improved now under Solskjaer. And... Um, David De Gea, uh, you already know the news on him. I think he's going to remain our number one goalkeeper for next season. I think there's Man United fans saying that they want David De Gea to remain number one for next season uh, because there was talks about you know Dean Henderson possibly becoming number one next season, but I don't see it happening. Dean Henderson could actually go out on loan for another season and this has been Dean Henderson's second season on loan with Sheffield United. And I've got to make an admission, he has been Sheffield United's player of the season. You know, he's going to be staying with Sheffield United for the remainder of this season. Dean Enton's also had quite a few other loan spells, you know, with Stockport, Grimsby, Shrewsbury. Um, we actually got him from Carlisle back in 2011 at just the age of 14. But we see him as a long-term replacement for De Gea, so this is where I want to get rid of Dean Enton permanently. But Solskjaer did say um, quite a few weeks ago now that Dean Enton's not ready to become Man United's number one, but he said he expects him to become our number one and England's number one goalkeeper in the future. This has been David De Gea's ninth season at Man United. You know, he's approaching his 10th year at the football club, is David De Gea. And he's still regarded as one of the best goalkeepers in the world, reflecting on what he's achieved at the football club. Because like I've said before, he's won everything here domestically. As David De Gea, you know, he's, he's won individual awards, reflects on his good run of performances. He's overtaken Peter Schmeichel on appearances because David De Gea has made 399 appearances now for us in all competitions, so he's nearly on 400. I think he's had seven good years out of the nine years he's been here because in the last couple of years, David De Gea has been a liability, reflects on the calamitous mistakes he has made. I did say to you, didn't I, when David De Gea does eventually leave Man United, I think he'll go back to Spain. Main explanations, he was born in Spain, his girlfriend... Girlfriends from Spain, I think his relatives are. Don't forget back in 2015, he was close to joining Real Madrid, but due to the fax machine, his move to Madrid didn't materialise. David De Gea is on 375 grand a week because he signed a new four-year deal last September and he is in his late 20s. So I think he's going to remain at number one. He's David De Gea. So yeah, um, Victor Lindelof, um, he'll... he'll uh, remain our first choice centre half uh, for now probably will remain our first choice centre half for next season alongside Harry Maguire because there were some people saying maybe now Victor Lindelof needs to be dropped and you know we should play Bay ahead of Victor Lindelof but you know I like Bay a lot he's a very very good centre half very composed but my element of concern about Eric Bay is that he's injury prone you know, Victor Lindelof's really proved himself he's had some bad games for Man United you know we got him in 2017 under Mourinho Paid £30 million pounds in from Benfica and he did struggle for that consistency in his first season, did Lindelof. But last season, this season, a lot of aspects of his game have really, really improved. So um, there you go. But um, like I said to you, what I've seen in this unbeaten run, I'm getting glimpses of the Alex Ferguson days. Now, I don't think we'll ever replicate what, we did, what Ferguson did. No one will replicate what Ferguson did. No, no one who will last as long as Alex Ferguson did. But I still think we can get back being competitive under Solskjaer. You know, 
we haven't dominated English football since the Ferguson era. You know, Ferguson enjoyed 26 years, was it? Man United or 27 enjoyed over 20 years of success because put into the equation, Ferguson didn't win out in his first four years at Manchester United. And, you know, you know he was very, very close to getting tapped. It's a good job he didn't because, you know, he wouldn't have got any success whatsoever. You know, won a total of 38 major honours under Ferguson, including 13 Premier League titles. Um, but before Ferguson... You know, we, we we was just like, you know, we have been in the last seven years, you know, from 2013 to 2020, you know, because we weren't good under Ron Atkinson. You know, we weren't uh, that good under Wolf McGuinness. You know, Wolf McGuinness enjoyed 18 months at the club and only managed to recruit one player in a herd. Franco Fowler got relegated under him back in 1974 and that's 40-odd years ago now. So, there you go. Uh, by the way, you know, the news on Paul Popper, you know... There's a great chance, you know, he could end up signing a new long-term contract at Manchester United, and I'm hopeful of this. Fabrizio Romano, um, he came out and said, we've entered negotiations with Mini Raliola over extending Paul Pogba's contract. As it stands at the moment, Pogba's just got under a year left on his contract, but the club do have an option to extend it for a further year. Do we have, do we have an option to extend it for a further year? Solskjaer did say that he wants Paul Pogba to commit his long-term future in Man United. You know, Paul Pogba's recently spoken about how Man United can become a top team again. I didn't really have a perception on Pogba earlier on in the season because, like I said, he was out with an ankle injury. But since the resumption of the season, he has been unbelievable as Paul Pogba. One point he was looking likely he was going to leave Man United. I thought last summer um, he was going to go to Real Madrid because Madrid were in for him and he said he was seeking for a new challenge. Um, at one point I thought he was going to be going back to Juventus because Juventus were in for him. Barcelona and PSG have also been in for him in the past. So um, there you go. Anyway, um, next video I'll be giving you my reaction to Oligan and Solskjaer's press conference ahead of the Southampton game. So yeah. So anyway guys, that's everything to update today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.